Hello everyone and welcome back to Taito Ecology and we're in the Himalayas biodome again because oh my gosh it is still so stunningly beautiful and I am having such a wonderful time putting down all of the beautiful plants and looking at our new little creatures like the marmots. Look at our little marmot. It's so cute. Did you see him running over here? <gasps> Look at the way he lays down. Isn't that just the most adorable thing? But it seems we actually have some trouble in this beautiful mountain paradise. And that is that the pikas are starting to starve. And I have no idea what to think about that. So let's go ahead and turn on our territory markers. And I did leave it running for a few months before. I think it ran for about a month without us. So a group of pikas somewhere is beginning to starve. Not these guys. These guys are doing well. These guys could probably use a teensy bit more food, but they're not doing horrible, so I'm sort of baffled. Group of pikas starving. Group of pikas. Do I have any other pikas? I don't think so. I think it's this group. I think this group is saying, hey, we're really hungry. We don't have enough to eat. So let's go ahead and we're going to get down on the ground. <gasps> There's a pika. And this little guy is so hungry. Well, what do you need, little one? Variety of grasses, seeds, and other greens. Well, he's got a whole bunch of fairy grass. He's got a whole bunch of poppies. Um, is there another pika kicking around over here? Oh, there's one. He's hungry too. Why aren't you guys eating the stuff that's over here? Well, let's go and research uh, this conundrum by seeing what the pikas over here are eating. But it looks like we'll have to wait. Oh, look at all the mushrooms. Looks like we'll have to wait until they wake up. But I think we may have a hint in what the pikas want to eat. In the fact that a group of mushrooms has a low population. So, yeah, look at this. Some of these mushrooms are being nibbled on. And I would probably point fingers at the hungry little pika for that. So let's go ahead and put more mushrooms down. I have no problem with that. You guys know how much I absolutely adore mushrooms. But, yeah, so last time we actually worked on helping out our little pikas. We have, like, these tiny little bamboo groves we've been putting together. So that we can start getting enough bamboo down to hopefully feed our red pandas and our elephants. When we have add in the Asian elephants in the future and I did go and I visited the other biodomes in order to collect lots and lots of terra coins <laughs> so we can start spreading out wherever we want to go so we'll probably buy another area over here pretty soon how are our pangolins they seem like they're doing okay I wouldn't mind if they had a few more ants to eat I wonder if we keep enough populations of ants if that'll keep the ants from like dying out. Oh, look, there's our little pangolins. <gasps> there they are. Let's go see what they're up to. But they will eat not only ants, but all of the other insects in our biodomes too. Look at the little shuffle. <gasps> look at that little shuffle. Is it not the cutest thing you've ever seen? They're so slow. Go little buddy, go. <laughs> you need to get some food. You need to get some food. We have some delicious juicy earthworms. Oh, look at him. He's getting so hungry. All right, come on. Come on. Oh my gosh, he's so tiny. He's so tiny. He's so small. Come on, buddy. You can make it over here. All right. We'll just kind of, we'll keep an eye on him while he wiggles his way over so slowly. And we'll put down some plants and things. So maybe it can be a little more comfy over here for him once he gets here. All right. Maybe some more, some more ferns. Want to put some ferns down somewhere. Aha. There we go. Hi, little guy. Hi. Is that better? Is that better? Is that all you needed in life? He needed he needed some ants, you guys. Oh, look at that. Oh, he's so cute. Right. Got to, oh, and now he takes a nap. Yep, now he's full. All right, and then we have another full little pangolin over here. So that's good, but let's go check out our pikas again. Because I'm very curious to see what our pikas are going to be eating over here. <gasps> there's a pika under the tree. Hi, little one. All right, so they're just kind of hanging out. Taking some snooze, taking some snooze. Anybody over here? Now, it seems like these ones have been coming over to this little mushroom spot to eat. Yeah, look at that. Now he's full. Wait, now, now, now you're full. Were you just eating? Okay, herbivores, eat these. Were you just eating a mushroom or this fern? Who knows? And now it's nighttime, so he's going to take a snooze and not let us know about it anyway. All right, let's turn the territory markers back off because, wow, is this ever pretty just to sit back here and admire it like this. And then how are our marmots doing? He's coming in to eat more of the fairy grass. Yes. Okay. So now he has been fed. Good. And I think we should probably add in a bit more fairy grass. Yeah, they get hungry fast. So we probably need to just be chucking fairy grass down along this line whenever we get a free chance. And I'm also putting in, you know, some of the maidenhair ferns. I don't really, I'm not particularly eager to add an oak in, but I'm going to add an oak in just so that it's somewhere here and maybe some of the lucky guys can wiggle out that far to go eat some. Um, a little cluster of poppies here and there is really nice. 
but I really enjoy putting down like the Himalayan honeysuckle. All right, but the other reason I wanna expand our biodome is that once we unlock into zone two, which is really cheap by the way, holy moly, that increases how much energy we can have. So we have unlocked a zone two. Wow. And that means we have this whole area to work in now. <gasps> Look, there's water way over there. Oh my gosh. All right, so let's start getting zone two prepped and we can spread our beautiful bamboo forest out this way. And then once we get that going, I'm pretty sure I'll feel confident enough to add in at least one population of adorable red panda. And we will be adding in the predators in the, the predators, <laughs> predators in the future, but it'll be a little while because as I've mentioned before, you don't want to add them in until you know your herbivores are doing well. And already we had a population of pika that was not doing so well. Pika, pika. They're adorable. Either way. All right, come on, come on, come on. Come on, energy, come on. All right, well, I did collect up all those Taito coins from the other biomes, um, which some of which... Oh dear, let's just say we're, I'm going to show you guys the chaos that has been happening in some of the other biomes in a little bit. All right, we'll put down some of you, and then we need to mix it in with some honeysuckle, and let's not forget how important our earthworms and our mushrooms are. Very important, so that we can return that nutrient cycle to the plants. There we go. There we go. All right. Wonderful. Oh, and the staghorns. Or staghorns. What? <laughs> staghorn is a type of mushroom. I meant to say the stag beetles. We'll add those guys in too. Some more honeysuckle everywhere because it's so pretty. It's so pretty and I think it are, would really help all pollinators. Oh, and the goji berries too. All right. And then once we get this going, I think I might get like little populations. Yeah, like little goji berry grove going on right here. No, I don't want them shaped like that. Yeah, I want them more kind of clustered in like this. And then bamboo like that. I like how you're starting, it's starting to be where you can overlap the plants a little bit easier or maybe I'm just getting better at it, but I really like that because I love putting just tons and tons of plants in. That's something that's very much a Siri preference. All right, maybe some joint fur. It's not, a, it's not very cute to me, joint fur, but that's okay. Plants don't always have to be cute to be useful. All right, <laughs> like clearly. And let's put in some maidenhair ferns, just sort of scattered about here and there. There we go. Because where I live, there's just ferns all over the place in the forest, and I I love that. There weren't really a lot of ferns growing up in Missouri, I think, because Missouri can get extremely dry. Um, and it's more kind of like a grassland place, even in the forest. And columbine flowers are really popular, too. Um, you could stumble on, like, a whole clump of columbines in a shaded spot in the forest pretty often. But ferns were kind of a novelty to me. So when I moved out here to North Carolina and the mountains were just full of ferns, I was beside myself with with excitement because it was just so much fun to be surrounded by those beautiful beautiful plants all right so let's maybe put in a little bit more honeysuckle and then once we get that honeysuckle added in yeah like a couple clusters of them here and there maybe a pollinator to take care of everything over here and then maybe a little colony of pika that can just live in here and be like yay we're so happy let's put some green hawk moths yeah and maybe one of these butterfly yeah 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 the paris peacock butterflies there we go and like a little couple spots of ants. There we go. And then where are my little pika? There's the marmots. There's the pangolins. There's the pika right here. So we'll put in a little colony of pika. They get to live right in the middle of this goji berry area. And hopefully they will breed and reproduce and have a grand old time over here. And then I sort of feel like I want, I'm getting, I'm itching to add something a little bit bigger in lately. So what do I want to add in? What is it that I'm thinking of? Hmm, not quite a predator just yet. Maybe a marmot? I feel like a marmot would need more food. They really go for this fairy grass. In fact, I think that's actually what I'm itching to add in is more fairy grass. And you may go, but why Siri? It's just grass. Exactly, you guys, it's just grass and a lot of animals eat it. So I kind of want to make sure we have plenty of it. What, what, tell me about yourself. All right, now it's all about you. Himalayan fairy grass. Reproduction is super fast. That's interesting. I would love to see if we can have some of the grass start spreading out. I haven't noticed it spreading out in the Himalayan biodome yet, but it'll probably do that in the future. 
Many herbivores will feast on this hardy grass. Birds and small rodents like to use fairy grass, drooping fairy grasses, drooping yellow flowers, and high stalks as cover. Ah, that's another aspect to the plants that we actually haven't even talked about. Yes, it's wonderful to have them there to eat, but you guys, the reality is a lot of these like low-lying, mid-level, and then canopy plants are needed simply for the sake of being somewhere for the pika to hide so it doesn't get eaten by everything. So this little guy, where are you going for food, little buddy? Oh, I think I know where he's headed. There's a yummy looking mushroom right over here. He's got his teensy little eyes locked right on this delicious looking mushroom, if you ask me. Oh, look, you can see through the log. Oh my gosh, I love these logs. My little stag beetles, I love you. May your moss grow and prosper under your feet. Is that what you're coming over here for, little guy? Oh my gosh, he's so cute. He's so cute. Why is this so pretty? <laughs> I don't know. It's just like the solitary pika. The beautiful mushroom. I don't know why it's so enchanting to me. Where are you going, huh? Surely. I knew it. <laughs> Did you see him stuff his little cheeks with that? <laughs> that was adorable. I think we're going to need to put in a lot more mushrooms. I have no problem with that. All the mushrooms for you guys. All the mushrooms and goji berries you guys want. All right. So we'll put some of these down. So we've got mushrooms just going absolutely everywhere. And in fact, I wonder if I have enough mushrooms, enough of those things to be able to justify another population of pika. And you, I know a lot of you are like, but Sarah, you're focusing so much on the pika. Give it a rest. I want to see a predator. But it's, you gotta be patient, you guys. If we aren't patient and we don't build our way up, then it's just going to be a sad result. All right, actually, I kind of didn't want to put that birch tree down. I want I wish... Every now and then I wish there was a way to get rid of it, but now we just have to wait for nature to take its course. It's an invasive birch tree. Accidentally invasive birch tree. All right. Pomegranate, pomegranate. I do want the pomegranate tree, so we'll put you down. And then maybe another pomegranate tree right over here. So we can sort of start building an area where we can put the pika in. And then, yeah, I want some rhododendrons. Give me some beautiful rhododendrons put you guys down. The, now these are very beautiful, but I will say the rhododendrons here are multiple colors. There's purple rhododendrons. There's like white rhododendrons. They're very pretty. All right. But North Carolina works really hard at like breeding up plants <laughs> that are drop dead gorgeous too. <gasps> Why have I not put these wood apples down yet? They're so lovely. Okay. We're going to have a little wood apple forest that'll sort of spread over this direction. And then I want to put another population of pikas in. So we need to scale it back. We've been doing these big trees. So just like I mentioned earlier, now we're going to scale back down to the bushes and things that the little pika would rely on for cover. Though I think those guys actually will make burrows that they'll like take their little clusters of grass in. Seriously, if you guys haven't looked up the pictures of a pika stuffing its mouth with the adorable little dried grasses and flowers, you need to do that right now because oh my gosh, it's so cute. It really, really is. All right, let's go ahead and grab some honeysuckles. No, I don't want honeysuckle like that. Yeah, I want honeysuckle more in this shape. And we can kind of make a new cluster of honeysuckle. And I sort of want to throw a random plant in again. Uh, maybe like a joint fur, a poppy. Because you don't get really neat, tidy, organized life like a cedar tree. Cedar tree. Just to be a bit random, maybe. Just a cedar tree that's sort of... Eh, let's put it back here, I think. There we go. You don't really get everything nice and tidy and organized when it comes to a forest. Plus, who knows? Maybe throwing the cedar tree over here. And I have no idea what the cedar tree is going to do for us. It's not enjoyed. Deer will eat them in a pinch. Um, produce an oil that acts as an insect repellent. Interesting. Like, maybe it's just going to be a beautiful cedar tree that sits there. But it's good to throw some of those in now and then just for a bit of bit of variety and you never know maybe that's going to be a great rest stop for a bird like if this was real life you know what I mean oh the oak tree might have been a good one to add in too I do like this oak tree okay I'm gonna put the oak tree over here too so we're getting some of the bigger trees over here but we'll have to see how long they last and then we also need to go back down to some of these smaller plants as well some of this fairy grass because I need my pikas, the population of pikas. And I think we're almost to the point where we can have an overlapping population of marmots over here as well. But I need them to be able to thrive and be happy and, and have many, many babies because then eventually those babies are going to turn into food for other things. There we go. 
see so this is this really comforts me because you want to see this especially if you have a fish tank too uh for most fish as well your low-lying plants so we've got our maiden hairs and we've got our grasses that are nice and low-lying they're kind of towards the bottom and then building your way up we have our bushes and then you build your way up even taller and you have your trees and like i was mentioning earlier it not only provides food for everybody but protection somewhere to hide a good place for our little prey animals where's my pikas because, well, marmots, you hang in there. I'm going to put you down in just a second. Because a good place for our tiny little prey animals to kind of curl up and have somewhere safe to be at all tiers. All right, so there's our new population of pikas. And then I'm going to put down some marmots. So we're going to have an overlapping population of marmots. And we'll have to see if that can hold steady or not. Also, let's put some green hawks right under there. Just hawk moth, that is. Right under there, just because we can. And some ants. Anytime I have some spare... <laughs> some spare... Um, Tido coins are some spare energy now. I'm just going to be putting down ants because I want to add in more of the adorable pangolins. But they move so slow. They really do. We can put earthworms all over the place over here too. I'm going to put a little population of pangolins over here and we'll see if I have enough to help them survive. <laughs> I feel like they need so much more. All right. And we'll put in like some poppies. How quickly do the poppies reproduce? Uh, pretty quickly according to this. Let's see, highly prized by Gardner. Difficult to grow outside of its home range. I agree, all my poppies are dead. I had to go travel for a couple of weeks and I came back and my poppies just, they, they were, had none of that nonsense. You need to make sure that they're very carefully watered and monitored and I, I didn't and so they died. <laughs> oh dear. All right, let's see. Uh, joint fur, do you wanna be anywhere over here? No, come on joint fur, don't be stubborn. Maybe over here? Uh, let's put you there, there we go. All right, very nice. Marmots are headed out to go find something to eat. Oh, they're eating the mushrooms. So mushrooms are super popular in this biome, which I really like because I love mushrooms. So we've got those scattered everywhere. All right, and let's add in another pangolin, little pangolin parade, because I think they're absolutely wonderful. And we'll kind of put them right there. Oh, they're so tiny. <gasps> they're so tiny. Oh, I love them so much. All right, so we've really got a good start, I think, to everything over here. Oh my gosh. Pangolins, why? Oh my gosh, I am so weak to your adorableness. I just can't even handle it. And there's plenty of pikas. We've got some marmots headed out. See, look how exposed this area is. I would just, I would think I was going to wither up and die because it's so dry. And then also all of the predators would see me. So you guys stay over here in the bushes and eventually the bushes might spread this away. Ooh, that's a lot of mushrooms. We might have a little marmot and, and pika parade come this way. Oh, wow, it's pretty. Come, oh, there's a little pika. Is he gonna eat the mushroom? Is that where you're going, buddy? He probably just had a mushroom. Look at the way they're walking. Man, that's beautifully done. All right, maybe I can put in a poppy or two over here for them. There you go, guys, there you go. And some maidenhair ferns. Yeah, there you go. Now you guys can have a nice little environment just to relax in. So beautiful. Well, it's gorgeous now, and we might as well sit back and enjoy the beauty of it before we start adding in <laughs> all of the predators, and it, it becomes beautiful in its own chaotic way of life, the cycle of life and death. But we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good, I think. Um, no alerts on anybody dying. Let's check the population, the territory markers, on the one population that was having issues right here. And their hunger is still pretty darn high, and I'm not sure why. I really don't know why it's that high. It looks like they're just feasting on mushrooms, at least. So let's follow this little guy, because he's hungry. He's very hungry, and he's got all of this food all around him. Oh, there he goes. Maybe they just have really, really high hunger rates, and that's why he's like that. So, I mean, they seem to be doing okay. See, that little guy's fine. All right, well, we'll keep an eye on them. Because we need them mostly, I mean, eventually they're going to die. But what we mostly need is for them to stick around until they can reproduce. Which is getting pretty close. <gasps> Look at that. We might have some Pika babies when we come back next time. Oh my gosh, that would be so cool. Oh, and you can now skip time if you want to. You can come down here and you can like skip months at a time. So that would be really interesting to see. 
that would be really interesting to see because then we could guarantee the Pika babies being born. But I think we might we might wait on that for now. We might maybe do that next time if we still don't have any babies. So we're getting along there, you guys. I know it seems to be going a little bit slowly, but that's just because we are watching all of this get established. How's our pangolin population? Doing pretty good. Hopefully very slowly working their way towards food. And then hopefully we can have some of the plants start spreading themselves out so we don't have to spend so much minis doing it for them all of the time. Um, but that's okay, because they'll, they'll get there eventually. All right, fairy grass all over the place, bamboo all over the place. And then next time, I think I'll be comfortable enough to add in some red pandas, because I just really don't want my red pandas to die. I really, I mean, eventually they might get eaten, but they're like, I guess it's the knee-jerk reaction to the fact that they're endangered. <laughs> but they'd be eaten by an endangered tiger. Does that make it better? Ah, oh, dear. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.